Hi, it's Nick here from Building Point Australia. Sometimes when we're working with steel connections, we need to introduce internal stiffening plates or members inside hollow sections such as large circular hollow sections. And when we're using Ideostatica, this can be a little bit tricky depending on the situation. Plates, it's not too difficult, but using a shape such as another circular section as shown in this illustration can be a bit tricky. So I thought I would show a way that I've gone about it in the past. And I'll switch to Ideostatica. Connection one in this file already has this set up, uh, shown, and it analyzes fine. And I'll show you how I set this connection up from scratch. So first of all, I'll add a member and uh, I'll make this a continuous member with a vertical orientation or a, a pitch of 90 degrees. And first up, I want to set this up or specify this as a large diameter circular section. So 1200 millimeters diameter with a thickness of 20 millimeters. And it's not a rolled section as such, it would be a fabricated shape of this size. And I'm going to use plate grade 350. If you don't have the grade that you want already in the drop down list, select the plus symbol here and you can select from a, a large range of grades. So that section is fine and it's now 1200 diameter. And if we select the transparent view, we see we have nothing else at this stage. There is a support to the base of this column and I could add loading to the top if I wanted to or of course if I have other members coming in generally intersecting roughly at the node then uh, I can add other members to that. And we would normally introduce internal stiffening in a column because of some other members coming in. I won't deal with that today, I'll just focus on the internal stiffening that you might uh, want to introduce. Okay, so at this point I'll introduce another item and it won't be a member. I want to cut both ends of the item potentially but I don't want to add loads to it directly but of course I want it to be present in the connection and uh, operate as a, um, a physical object and transmit loads and so forth. So I'm not going to add another member, I'm going to add a stiffening member which is a bit like a plate in a sense but you can specify a cross section and you can cut all sides and weld to all sides. So there is a distinct difference between members and stiffening members. And I can go to the transparent view to see uh, what I've got here. So this is a 508 diameter by 9.5 circle hollow section and it's 100 millimeters in length each side from its center point, uh, which is uh, at the node like that. So that's not too bad. What I'll do is make that a bit longer since I've got a 1200 millimeter diameter steel column. I want to just make this a little bit longer than half of that in each direction and see if I can cut the outsides off and weld this to the inside of the column. Okay, so the next thing to do would be to introduce a member cut operation. So even though it's not strictly a member, it is of a member shape. So we use a member cut operation for a stiffening member like this. And it's defaulting to cutting the column and hence the error message, but I don't want to cut the column. I want to cut the stiffening member. And uh, now it's defaulting to the beginning end of that stiffening member as a bounding box, which is a planar cut you know, at the intersecting surface or at some offset from that if you like. I'll try a surface cut and you know, obviously I'm not getting exactly what I want. It's not cutting to the right side for an internal stiffener and so I'll try the, the other end and I notice that uh, well it's now cutting to the outside again. So this is the difficulty that we have with trying to achieve an internal stiffener. Uh, we have to go about it in another way and there's another type of surface cut, I'll try that, a surface all around and that's showing us of course the two external parts again and uh, I'm not achieving the internal stiffener that I want. With the stiffening member, I'll untick that for a moment, I'll try making it extend just from the centre out 
one side. So the cut operation might have a bit more luck or success this time. And it's a surface all around. Well, maybe I'll make it a surface cut and it's cutting off the end. What if I cut off just the beginning part? Well, that seems to make no difference. So again, this is not quite achieving what I want. What I've found is that we can use a cold form polygon instead of a circular cross section. So let's change this instead of that type of cross section. Let's go to a new type of cross section, which is a cold formed polygon like this. And we're going to specify the details that would simulate a circular section. So the radius now, not 1200 diameter, but 600 radius. And the thickness, I want to make 20 millimeters thick again, and plate grade 350. And by default, for large circular sections in Idea Statica, we'll get 64 faces and 64 vertices. But I want to cut that down a little bit. It'll be a little bit quicker to set up with fewer sides like this. So that's fine. And it's very similar to before. And I'll show the transparent view. And let's have a look at this stiffening member, still uh, the same 700 millimeter length with a cut operation to the beginning and uh, to the end. We, we still haven't gotten any further, but what we can do is specify the specific face now. And uh, we want to identify which face we want to uh, achieve a cut to. So if I hover over this element of the column, we see on the bottom left, this is member one, web three. So let's try that. And what we want to do is by looking at the solid view is confirm the welding that I want at that cut. I do want a one-sided fillet weld. I want it to be a 10 millimeter leg length like that. And so what we see is, uh, I guess, the beginning of some success here with this cut operation, that we've at least cut one part of the internal stiffening member now to the uh, internal face of the column. So it's a little bit unwieldy, and this is part of the reason why I reduced the number of uh, sides compared to the default. But it's just a matter of copying the cut operation and specing a different um, face or web of the, the column. So if, we, if I hover over this, I see on the bottom left, this is web 2, web 1, then web 32, 31, and 30. So it's just a matter of uh, specifying these details. So instead of web 3, we go to web 2, we see bit by bit we're getting there with uh, this operation. Copy, copy. We need six of these all together. So cut three is going to be web one, then web 32, web 31, and web 30. Okay, so that's looking quite good now. If I hover over a weld, I see on the bottom left, it's 10 millimeter leg, just to confirm. And it's a one-sided fillet weld, but uh, we can also use another trick. Select this window, say, select the white background, hover over something, press delete. This is just deleting something from the view and uh, not from the model. So we see there's no internal weld to that stiffener. Uh, of course, access inside a hollow section is already difficult and certainly we can't get inside uh, the smaller section. So we, we just want to confirm that we have uh, just a uh, external fill-up weld there. It might be that this is a, quite a large column and access is not too bad, or maybe the column is not continuous past this joint by a very long distance and access um, from one side or even both sides if it's a very short part of a larger uh, column uh, may well be possible. So that's of course a separate consideration but uh, the focus here is to show how this can be done in the software. And if we do something to refresh the view such as select transparent and solid we get all those deleted items back. All right, so that's one 
uh, side that's working fine and uh, simply want to repeat these operations to uh, set it up um, coming the other way. So what I'll do is copy the stiffening member and this time make it extend the in the other direction like that and then copy a cut operation and for this one I want to select stiffening member 2 and let's start on that uh, uh, one of these faces and so that's member 1 web 14 and we've got the same size fillet weld there and I'll continue that and so I'll do the same for the other segments and cut out some of this recording and come back when I've completed those welds. Okay, so here I have all of the welds uh, to the other side. And so the internal stiffening member is just about ready. If I look at the transparent view from the home view, for example, and rotate this, I can see the yellow rectangles joining the mid thicknesses of plates that are joined by welds, whether they're fillet or butt welds. But I don't yet have a join between the two stiffening members. What I'd like to see is a thin yellow line, which is really the same as these yellow rectangles, but of uh, it's a rectangle of zero width. So I need to join those elements up. So what I'll do is a member cut operation again, and I can do stiffener one to stiffening member two, and I want a butt weld at the cut. It's not achieved with a bounding box. Let's try a surface cut. Again, I don't get that, but with a surface all around type of cut, I do get that butt weld at the mid length of the stiffening member now. So, uh, of course, we would not be making this internal member up from two parts. Uh, it would be one length, but uh, I found a, a need to use this method, um, two stiffening members, but weld them to simulate uh, one member with that internal stiffening arrangement. So. Now we have it, the stiffening member fully fillet welded to the interior surface and cut to the appropriate shape. And we of course should put some loads on it and run the analysis and make sure that the model appears to be working and behaving itself and giving sensible results. So uh, I'll add a load effect now and uh, the beginning of the column will be down here, that's the support. The end of the column will be at the top. And so what I'll do is add uh, a large compression, minus 10,000 kilonewtons. So 10,000 kilonewtons down. We can confirm that with the arrow here. And I'll put some moment on it as well, uh, such as 3,000 kilonewton meters. And we see that here like that. And uh, I'll carry out the analysis of this and I'll do a buckling analysis as well. And there we have the results. Uh, everything is uh, working. Uh, it's not working particularly hard, hence it's grey. But let's have a look at the von Mai stress, the so-called equivalent stress. And we see stress is getting reasonably high on this face where there's both compression from the axial force and also from the moment. And we do see some stress in the stiffening member, particularly on this side where it's, uh, the, there's compression in the external column. And we can have a look at the plastic strain. We see from the summary there essentially is none. It's working still in the elastic range. And let's have a look at the buckling shapes again, just as a confirmation that things appear to be sensible in this model. So the lowest buckling load factor is uh, about 16.8, shown here, and here's the mode. 
and we can select some other buckling modes as well and you know, with uh, various buckling load factors all roughly the same. So that appears to be uh, working fine as well. We see some stiffening effect at the mid height of this column due to the interior stiffener here in that buckling mode. So I'm quite confident that uh, the software is uh, working fine and is properly including the effects of uh, all the members and, and welds in this connection. So all right, hopefully that has uh, assisted you if you have a situation such as this where you uh, would like an internally stiffened uh, hollow section and use a, a member shape or some sort of shape uh, rather than just a plate to achieve that. Thanks very much. Cheers.